Since 1969, South Australia's sole gas supply has been the Moomba gas field in the state's north. With 70% of the state's electricity generated by gas, this has been a critical resource. Moomba's proven reserves will be depleted by 2010, making an alternative essential. The sea gas pipeline was conceived to provide this alternative, delivering natural gas from new fields off the Victorian coast. Sea gas also links the gas networks of Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia, improving the security of gas supplies around the country. Sea gas is a partnership of South Australia's major energy companies, International Power, Origin Energy and TXU. With initial planning complete, Seagas called for expressions of interest in October 2001 and shortlisted four potential partners to engineer, design and construct the pipeline. On the 29th of May 2002, Seagas announced their choice. Speaker Pag Lucas, a joint venture between French pipeline giants Speaker Pag and AJ Lucas, Australia's leading pipeline company. As an EPC contract, Speaker Pag Lucas are responsible for every element Detail engineering, procurement, construction, testing and commissioning. They also have to liaise with the hundreds of landowners, two state governments and dozens of local authorities along the pipeline. And in 19 months, the pipeline must be in full operation, delivering gas for industrial and domestic use. With decades of pipeline experience around the world, the partners knew exactly what was involved and were confident their people could deliver. Seagas begins at the Minerva gas plant near the famous Twelve Apostles, where BHP Billiton's offshore gas field comes ashore. It travels through diverse landscapes. Valuable farmland, forests, open plains, swamplands, vineyards and urban areas. Crossing eight major rivers and hundreds of roads, all presenting their own challenges. By September 2002, planning was well advanced, the pipe was being manufactured, other major items ordered, and the crews were beginning to mobilise. Then came the project's biggest challenge. TXU joined the consortium, and the pipeline's capacity had to nearly double. This could have delayed the project for months. But with some careful analysis and innovative thinking, Speed Kapag Lucas devised the solution. The 350 mm pipe already ordered would be laid as a dual pipeline over half the distance and additional 450 mm pipe would complete the route. The engineering and construction issues with dual pipes in one trench were quickly solved. Larger trenching equipment was ordered, schedules adjusted and suppliers found for the extra 18 inch pipe. Construction began on schedule in November. Over 650 private landowners and government authorities own and manage the land the pipeline crosses. Speaker Pag Lucas visited every one of them to ensure they understood the pipeline construction process and to ensure the landowners' needs were considered. With the right-of-way surveyed and fenced, the topsoil is removed. Trees are carefully trimmed and worked around to ensure the landscape can be completely restored. The pipe, manufactured in Australia, Japan and Korea, is coated inside and out to prevent corrosion. Freighted to stockpiles by rail, it's trucked to the right of way and strung in place ready for welding. Welding is critical. Every one of the 60,000 welds has to withstand full pressure for the pipeline's 80-year design life. Our welders are the very best in this demanding technical skill. To make sure every weld meets specification, each is x-rayed and inspected. Any faults found are reworked and retested. With a section of pipe complete, it's time to prepare the trench, which is dug with a variety of techniques depending on terrain and geology. Specialized bucket wheel trenches like this can dig several kilometers of trench a day. Excavators are used where access is more restricted, the route has many bends, and when a pipeline is close to existing services, like this water main. For the toughest rock, precisely sequenced explosives are used. Careful direction of the explosive force minimizes the surface disruption and leaves the rock ready for removal. The pipeline crosses rivers and most roads without trenching by using HDD. A drilling rig bores a hole along an engineered path deep beneath the obstacle. Here, the Murray River. 
The pre-tested pipe string is then drawn through the hole. HDD is a powerful technique for avoiding disruption and environmental damage, and Lucas are world leaders. Sea gas crosses eight major rivers and 220 roads, creeks and other obstacles using HDD. For the trenched part of the pipeline, lowering in is next. The coating is given a final check as the pipe is lowered into the trench. This high voltage tester can find the smallest pinhole in the pipe's coating. Any it finds are repaired immediately. Once the pipe's in the trench, every joint is measured and logged to within millimetres using differential GPS and a GIS database. Each length of pipe is identified and can be tracked back to its manufacture, coating and welding. To protect the coating, the pipe is surrounded by rock-free padding. These machines sift the spoil and return the sifted padding to the trench. This is normally done in two layers, one before lowering in, the second after. Seagas uses innovative pillows to keep the pipes off the trench floor, so the padding can be done in one pass. Next, the trench is backfilled and hydrostatic testing ensures the pipeline is free of leaks and safe to its rated capacity. For the testing, each length of pipeline, up to 30 kilometres long, is filled with water, then pressurised using these giant pumps with enough pressure to stretch their steel walls. Sensitive gauges monitor the pressure to detect any leaks right down to a pinhole. Once the test is complete, the water is pumped into the next section and the pipe is cleaned, dried and sealed, ready for gas. The teams are based in mobile camps which move to four sites during the construction period. The camps can accommodate up to 350 people and provide full safety and logistical backup for the crews and their equipment. The day begins early in camp. After a 5am breakfast, the crews fuel their vehicles and set off for the day's work. The final stage of construction is to restore the land. With the trench filled, the topsoil is carefully replaced following the land's original contours. It is then replanted with the local grass, crops or other plants it had before the pipeline began. Here's a section of the route six months after replanting with no sign of the pipeline apart from its location markers. Restoration isn't complete until every landowner is happy with the revegetation and all gates and fences have been replaced. The diverse landscapes made environmental management another critical element of the pipeline. Careful planning, including scheduling construction to avoid breeding seasons, weather and bushfire risk, helped reduce the chance of environmental damage. By using HDD for all river and road crossings, potential risks were completely eliminated. Tight procedures carefully followed and close working relationships ensured sea gas was completed without a single reportable environmental incident. As the pipeline itself nears completion, the stations are constructed. Twelve mainline valves, six meter stations and five scraper stations. These enable sections of the pipeline to be isolated and facilitate regular cleaning and checking. Sea gas is managed via a sophisticated SCADA system that allows the central control station to monitor the entire pipeline and ensure potential problems are identified immediately. With construction complete, the process of commissioning begins. Every valve, sensor and control is tested for correct operation and leaks. The line is purged and progressively charged with gas ready for commercial operation. Seagas couldn't have had a tougher test on its first official day. At 3 a.m., a major fire shut down the Moomba gas plant that supplies Adelaide's gas. Ready to operate as scheduled, Seagas was able to fill the shortfall at times supplying 100% of the city's gas. I have great pleasure in declaring this project well and truly open. Thank you. A credit to the foresight of the South Australian Government, the Seagas Partners, the experience and expertise of Speaker Pag Lucas, and the hundreds of men and women who made it a reality. The Seagas Pipeline has taken its place as a key element in Australia's energy infrastructure, a role it's designed to fulfil until near the end of the 21st century.